What is it about the underdog that draws us into movies and novels? We all seem to enjoy a good story where a common person rises up to a particular occasion and triumphs over some form of darkness. These stories instill courage, hope, and vision in our souls. We are often motivated to go beyond what we have done and to accomplish more than we dreamt possible. I believe this is how Jesus sees each of us. I believe Jesus is looking for the person who looks into his eyes and actually believes what Jesus has said. Whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I am going to be with the Father. The one who believes these words of Jesus will fight until the very end and be victorious. In 1 Samuel, there's a story about King Saul's son, Jonathan, getting restless about waiting for the best time to attack their enemy, the Philistines. Jonathan took things into his own hands, took his assistant up to the mountain to engage some of the Philistine soldiers, just the two of them. It's an exciting story of Jonathan's victory over 20 trained warriors, which caused the whole army to flee from Israel. One of my favorite lines in the Bible is found in 1 Samuel 14, 6, where Jonathan states to his assistant, come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing can hinder the work of the Lord from saving by many or by few. By many or by few. Jonathan consecrated himself. He set himself apart to be used by God to overtake the enemy. One young man and his assistant against 20 seasoned soldiers. And the underdog won. In 2 Kings 5, we find the story of a young nameless girl who was captured by a Syrian raiding party. This young girl saw her village ransacked and destroyed. She may have witnessed the death of some of her family members. She was forced to be the slave of the wife of the general of the Syrian army. The general's name was Naaman, and he had leprosy. Now, if I'm this young girl, I'm very angry and bitter. I may do my job to save my life, but I'm not about to have compassion and care upon the general who has leprosy. But this young nameless girl is different. She encouraged Naaman to go back to Israel and see the prophet Elisha. The young girl has faith that Elisha will heal Naaman. Remember that Naaman and Syria were enemies of the Jews and Israel. The story has a few twists and turns, but it ends up that Naaman does go to see Elisha and Naaman is healed of his leprosy. His healing causes Naaman to say these words, quote, From now on, your servant will not offer burnt offerings or sacrifices to any god but the Lord. Unquote. The strong faith of a young kidnapped slave girl served to impact the entire nation of Syria. God uses common people, underdogs, who are ready to engage battles for his cause to change entire nations. Whether it is a one young man against 20 seasoned soldiers, or one young kidnapped slave girl who impacted an entire nation, or you following the lead of the Spirit to impact your friends and neighborhood, God wants to use a consecrated minority. God is inviting you to be part of his consecrated minority of ordinary people to fight for the souls that Jesus died to redeem. Keep telling Jesus' story of faith, hope, and love to make a difference in the world. God has done everything to cause us to be 100% successful 100% of the time. So enjoy the adventure of following the Trinity and sharing the good news as he directs you.